Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank Sam Jukes, J U K E S, on the Leela forum for this game. So he played it 60 minutes each. It was Leela 0462 against Fritz 15, running on two CPUs. And this is a really interesting, suave game, which I believe is relevant if you play the English opening. So C4 from Leela 0, E5, Knight C3, Knight C6, G3. Bishop c5, Bishop g2. So the English opening is designed to control central squares like this and put a grip on them. Knight f6, e3, not blocking in that bishop. The knight can deploy on e2. So, so far, so good. Very logical play. Knight castles a6. b3. So not yet playing for d4. Rook e8, h3. Bishop b6, bishop b2, bishop f5, d3. There might have been a tactical possibility involving d3 there. It's shut out of the game. And in fact, here, black does indulge in a tactical possibility with knight b4, provoking white to fix down the pawn structure. So we have a kind of Botvinnik variation where white concedes the d4 square as a concession, but clamps down on, on the d5 square. And this is something, if you watch my recent shows, I've been playing this Botvinnik system with quite good success. So this is very interesting for me here. Knight c6, white grabs that dark square bishop now. Or tries to, rather. It tries to. The bishop goes to d4. Knight a c3, bishop c5. Again, knight a4, bishop d4. Queen d2. So it trades for its counterpart. Knight takes knight d4 and here we have knight takes d4 which gives some extra mobility to these pawns on the king side potentially but first white makes sure there isn't going to be fierce counterplay on the other side of the board white kind of clamps down first on the queen side with b4 and we see actually it's though the queen side is first shut down so a4 a5 this position after b5 is very shut down now on the queen side, kind of giving white what I'd call a free hand on the king side. So job done there, suppressing counterplay. Knight d1, the knight switches to the king side. Queen c7, f4, rook a7. Black is playing like a typical uh, computer, basically, seemingly pointless moves. And it's white that is building up something constructive here behind the scenes or behind the pawn chain rather. b6, rook a1, bishop c8. White is up to no good. Bishop f3. This move echoes that the light squares are slightly vulnerable. We have pawns on dark squares and the adjacent light squares are slightly weak. So to try and trade off the light square bishop seems like a logical thing to do. Queen d8, h4, knight h7. And it's here, potentially there's bishop g4, but at the moment white plays king g2 knight f8 and it's now bishop g4 is played make, making use of that nifty knight on f2 bishop b7 queen d1 job done really the bishop can potentially go to f5 now if black's not interested in trading off there rook a8 bishop h3 rook b8 queen f3 queen e7 h5 getting a grip more on light squares like g6 now now queen c7 rook g1 white is up to something here leader is up to something rook e7 bishop f5 rook b e8 rook e f1 knight e6 knight h3 knight f8 and here it looks as though there's a move you might not want to play because you might realize or think you'd be blundering if you did consider it you might think it's a blunder after guess what Leela plays in this position if I give you five seconds to pause the video okay white would ideally like to wrench open this g-file and does play g4 but isn't there a te technicality a technical hitch with this move in the form of g6 trapping the bishop Actually, <laughs> not really. Black played bishop a8. Let's have a look. g6. White can actually play just king h2. And if, for example, g takes, 
G takes check. It's white that will emerge with a big advantage here, threatening Queen G7 mate here. Black would have to give back material to stave off the mate and just ends up in a very bad way, basically. It's a very bad position, getting crushed really. So this is not really on the cards, uh, whatever way it's sliced. Okay, so G6 wasn't played. We have Bishop A8. G5 anyway, so it seems as though white's really making progress here, trying to open up this G file. Black has just been without counterplay. No D5 break, no breaks on the queen side. And that does seem to be a, a big feature of leader's play. She knows how to shut down the opponent's pawn breaks and still maintain her own. That's a great trick. Very instructive trick for us generally. It's the pawn breaks which liberate the pieces. If you can control those, making sure the opponent hasn't got any and you still have, that's a great trick to have. HG, King H1. So the rook is now blasting down the G file. King H8, Queen G3, 96, Rook F2, Rook G8. Uh, here, clearly, <laughs> Knight takes F4, there's Rook takes F4. So we're Queen G7. The G file's pretty dangerous at the moment. Rook G8 is played, FG, Rook D8. And now G6, very dangerous form pawn. The beginning of the end really queen h4 with big frets like h6 king g8 h6 and it's here black just breaks down realizes that the position is exceptionally bad and desperately gives up a bishop basically the engine's form of resignation let's have a look why if uh, for example rook e to e8 then Bishop g4 keeps an eye on f6 with the rook now to undermine this pawn chain in style. So, for example, knight of 8 hg, this position crashing through is very, very good. Rook e7, rook f7, and it's just going to be really nasty. Whatever way this happens, it's pretty disastrous for black, this position. So, yes, this is end of game territory. Bishop takes e4. That's just taken, and it's really just over. The rook was even offered <laughs> in a ridiculous manner. I know, I know. Uh, so, yeah, Black's just basically resigned in, in a computer form of resignation. Uh, in fact, the game ended here with King F8. It was adjudicated here. If it carried on, we can carry on with HG as an example, but it was adjudicated there after King F8. So HG... This position, just queen take there and win lots of uh, material and chatmates basically. So I thought that was a really neat positional game. It came up on the leader chess forums. Uh, if you want to contribute to the project or create some beautiful games and post them to forum, I might pick them up for videos or other video producers. This is a fantastic source of really interesting, suave games, in my view. Hope you enjoyed this one. Comments, questions, likes. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.